I discovered the Silly Symphony series um, while surfing the internet, watching movies in a uh, music-related Facebook group, <laughs> and I saw a, uh, a video of the skeleton dance, um, which was uh, combined with other music, some post-punk music. Never had this idea of working with cartoons. I enjoy watching cartoons, or I enjoyed watching cartoons. Also, like when I was younger, I, I, I did draw um, comics a bit, but not that much. But I never did, had this idea of that it might be like um, something that I might use for my art. Looking around me now, I can see these wonderfully energetic and somewhat chaotic paintings, but also the highly organized systems that you have in place in the studio. It's so interesting to see the order that goes into making the chaos, if you like. Um, and you mentioned to me that these two personality traits had something to do with your parents. Yeah, I, I, I guess, yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, I, I, when I grew up, my, my mother, she, uh, she had a textile studio. She did uh, like textile art and she, uh, her studio was very organized and every, like, every small thing, every piece that she's been using, every material had some bigger or smaller drawer where it was put. So um, um, for me, it was as a child, it was kind of hard because I didn't uh, immediately adapt to that. <laughs> but now I see that this somehow is, um, I, I, I mean, I can see that I work like that. Or it's, or it's like connected to the way my mother had her studio organized. Um, yeah, but as you said, at the same time, yeah, there's this chaos. And this is more like maybe how my father was working in his workshop as a potter and a ceramic designer. So I, um, I remember that he was always like, um, he had some kind of system, but no one would understand maybe like <laughs> <laughs> where the things were. From what I know, you take a very methodical approach which can be seen in the naming system that you've devised for your works, but also in your process. Can you take me through your process a little bit? Uh, it's always like starts with the piece itself. So I prepare the canvas mostly uh, before I know which movie uh, I will use for it, which cartoon. So first ink uh, and possibly acrylics. And then until I have like, there's some kind of substance on the, on the canvas. And then I check what kind of movie I, I would like to use. So um, I go through the stills maybe, which I already have prepared. And if I feel like uh, there's already like nice material I can use, I, I take uh, like a few stills, film stills from a sequence, which I, I, I want to start with and then I start drawing. And um, yeah, in between, like in between, I paint with acrylics again. So this is really important for me because it makes it possible to be really free using the uh, the soft pastels to to just draw and not think about how it will turn out in the end. It's just important that I just start working and I, I just work. <laughs> is it about an individual film that makes you want to work with it? So, for example, The Golden Touch, you've produced the biggest body of work from, and you mentioned that you kind of became obsessed with this character. Do you think Do you think you know why that was, why that is? Mm, I think it's because of the variety of uh, emotions the, the character depicts in the, in the, um, in the movie. And this variety makes it possible to use many, many, many different configurations to, to draw and to combine. Um, and this, this was really interesting, it's still really interesting for me to use. Going back to your process as well, I was wondering if there's also changes depending on what size canvas you're working with. Uh, absolutely, yeah, if it's uh, the, the bigger size, which I started for the exhibition, like the, the, the 195 by 240 centimeter pieces, um, 
they make it absolutely possible to get this feeling that you are uh, when you when you uh, look at the work that it feels like you need time to um, to look at all of the details and to understand what's going on or try to understand because I don't know if I can understand everything what's going on there but <laughs> it's uh, uh, it's really nice with the big ones that you have this and the small pieces are more like um, that you it's possible to depict the figures a bit more like that you can see like there's a certain character and there's a certain emotion it's uh, it's showing yeah I definitely see that with the small with the smaller works it's almost as if you can depict like the the scene that you've taken yeah. it from like it's yeah. particularly with um, some of your works from the Golden Touch mm -hmm. series yeah you know yeah. you can see these moments where the yeah. king is turning things to gold and it's much more easy for the viewer <laughs> yeah. To, yeah, to pick that out. Yeah. When looking at 35TT80H004M0405, which is the tortoise in the hair, this is kind of much more fleeting and the figures or characters are much harder to recognize and pick out. And then when you compare it with 36 TTR 007 M0004, which is Toby Tortoise Returns, you can clearly see Toby Tortoise and also Max Hare. It's more, more difficult to see, but you can pick him out. Is this a conscious decision that you make to, to include the characters more or not or is it just something that happens much more kind of intuitively in the in the process it, it's it's more like uh, happening in the process because mm. the uh, the one piece where you can recognize the toby tortoise returns piece um, is more like uh, i i stopped earlier with this piece and it's a certain stage where i usually draw the uh, the scenes more completely or the stills more completely so you can see the figures or the characters less uh, fragmented um, the other piece, like the tortoise, uh, the, the tortoise and the air piece, I have been working longer on it. It's, it has many, many layers, and so it's got more and more fragmented. So that's really interesting. So does that mean that with the tortoise and the hair piece, that, that these figures are under there? Yes, it always in the in the start, it's usually that that it's more like. Uh, uh, the, the figures are more complete, but actually uh, the tortoise um, and the hair piece is um, is really funny because the red lines, which I I did in the last step, they um, they depict them more completely than yeah. uh, than in between. Like it's mm -hmm. uh, it was the last step, and I decided to to draw them more completely, finally, which makes the like the whole work like come together. So this is the first time that all, all your silly symphonies have been kind of grouped together in this one object. How how is it for you seeing all of them together? Um, it's absolutely uh, fun to see them all together and to have this kind of like it's some kind of new work which which is there now that the book is also like standing for itself in a way uh, and it makes it possible also to have this kind of like um, possibility to see like all of the different aspects of the work during during the five years um, and also like even see more how they are connected and uh, that there are certain aspects in all the pieces which uh, still are present in the newer ones and also like things which have not happened before in pieces uh, which are new. Um, it's really nice to see that the whole series makes sense all together and that it works. And um, yeah, this also doesn't make me afraid of going on because I know that there's a lot of like um, things to find out and to, to invent again. <laughs>